husband comes home at night, if those kids are still alive, hey, I've done my job. Roseanne Barr. One year ago, she was a stand-up comedian. I go in this dress shop by Ansel's Brad. You got anything to make me look thinner? She says, yeah, how's about a month in Bangladesh? <laughs> Twelve years ago, she was a housewife living in a trailer. I never get out of the house. I never go no place. I never have no fun ever, 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 because I'm a housewife. I hate that word. I want to be called domestic goddess. It's so much more descriptive. Twenty years ago, okay, she was committed admit, to a I, state I, I mental okay. hospital. I shouldn't even, like, make fun of where nobody else comes from, because I come from about the worst place on earth, Salt Lake City, Utah. <laughs> and I'm Jewish, so that's why I'm like this and everything, in case you wonder. Thirty-six years ago, she was born into one of the few Jewish families in mostly Mormon Salt Lake City, Utah. Her father sold blankets and crucifixes door to door. There was little money, and Roseanne felt like an outsider. Her closest companion was her younger sister, Geraldine. Same thing. It's not. Great no, self, it is great not. Oh, this oh, most right. peculiar life story created this woman, giving her a voice and a wit that now speaks to millions in this season's hottest TV show, Roseanne. A guy is a lump like this donut. <laughs> okay, so first, you gotta get rid of all the stuff his mom did to him. <laughs> macho crap that they pick up from the beer commercial. <laughs> and then there's my personal favorite, the male ego. <laughs> she calls her comedy funny womanness, and it seems to have something to do with telling the truth about family life. A wonderful John Goodman plays her husband. Uh, tell us about the stud we're going to be meeting tonight. <laughs> Mother, you're not going to meet him. Well, we're going to be at the bowling alley, and... Chip's going to be at the bowling alley. We're bound to run into one another. Please don't embarrass me. Please. Oh, honey, there's no way we'd embarrass you. Roseanne has a house that's never clean, a husband who'll never be rich, and children who never mind. You're going to use that bag until you're 30. <laughs> Great, I'm just gonna look like a freak, that's all. What else is new? Shut up! <laughs> this is why some animals eat their young. The show manages to be anti-intellectual, but very smart. Anti-yuppie, but very hip. Much of the content draws on Roseanne's actual 16-year marriage to Bill Pentley, who helps with the writing, and we'll be seeing him periodically as Roseanne's TV husband's best friend. See ya. No, I usually eat with my sister, because our studio is like a block down here. So I get it, and then I go. Okay. So give me some cream cheese and okay. bagels. Okay. Word. These yeah. days, Roseanne spends much of her time here in Ventura Boulevard, next to the studio where she takes her show. It's been a rocky first season. One of the show's executive producers recently resigned, citing creative tensions with Roseanne. Friends are flowers in the garden of life. That makes me that? feel ill, like I could, like, regurgitate, but... <laughs> Still, her success seems to have no boundaries. She'll soon like be starring in a movie with Meryl Streep. You probably won't be surprised to learn that Roseanne, her husband and three children, live in a fairly modest home in L.A. San Fernando Valley. Inside, the decorating shows a softer side of her. She likes antiques. Some of these belong to her grandmother. On a piano that no one plays is a smiling photo of young Roseanne. It is staggering what has occurred between yeah, then and now. When you were 16, was it 16 when you were hit by the car? Yeah. <laughs> That's so funny to me. It's not so funny. I, I don't know, because it's so bizarre. <laughs> that was the turning point. Yeah, I, I'm going to school and I get hit by a car. And, uh, and um, I, like, died, you know. I, I died or whatever you call it. I was unconscious, so maybe I went really deep in myself. It was either death or that, one of those things. I was in a coma. Um, when I woke up a while later, I, I wasn't the same person that I was before the car accident. Because, uh, I mean, I had gone to a place where I guess a lot of people don't go, to, to the very edge. And when I came back, I, it was all going to be my way. And it always was my way after that. So what'd you do? Um, 
Well, I did go through that rebellion period after I got hit by the car. Then I went on to the next thing, which was after I had this great personality change, you know, my parents kind of panicked and, and uh, I went to all these social workers and, you know, the cut rate kind down at the mental health center, 350 an hour, you know, and they kind of diagnosed me and then they kind of send me away. Now, someone, this is something that, that I do know yeah. about from reading about you and it is, it's, I don't know, very odd to say the least, but here you were, this kid who was, your parents couldn't figure out mm -hmm. and they sent you to a mental hospital. Mm -hmm. For how long? I was there for about eight and a half months. It is not possible for a 17-year-old to spend eight months in a hospital and not have it even today hurt, frightened, something. I mean, you are, well, not, you are not the average person today, Roseanne, okay, even though you represent, yeah. you know, that. So something had to come from that time. Oh, everything came from that time. Okay. Yeah, everything came from there. But I'm trying to think of how to put it and how to talk about it because some parts of it are unspeakable. But uh, it was a very horrifying place. Everything about it was horrifying. And luckily or unluckily, I was very heavily drugged, so I saw everything through um, a pretty intense fog. But um, it was just a, it was Dante's Inferno, you know, but it was a place where you come out of and you emerge and you become something else or else you die. And I came out. Did you ever think that maybe there was something seriously wrong with you? Um, I thought the thing that was seriously wrong with me was that I was in Utah. Hmm. And I still do it 15 really? years later, yeah. Did you forgive your parents? Um, I tried to. Yeah, I tried to forgive my parents. And I think they've tried to forgive themselves, too. So it wasn't easy on them, either. Mm. And it wasn't easy on anyone who was ever there. And, uh, yeah, you know, I, I just, I just uh, emerged. I emerged from there a different person. You escaped. You left Utah. Yeah, I... Um, At 17. Yeah, I was 18 when I left 18. Utah. After this whole experience? Yeah. Out? Yeah. yeah. I went to live on a commune in the mountains of Colorado. And met? And met my husband and some very good friends that are still my very good friends. And uh, Tell me about life then. Tell me about Bill. What'd you like? I what met him, like? you mean? Yeah, was it love at first sight? Was For it? me it was. Really? Yeah, when I walked in and I saw Bill, I went, I'm gonna marry this guy. How'd you know? I just knew, I've always just known, it's real weird. So, okay, we bought a trailer. We were just living together then. Well, we bought a trailer because, you know, we had to invest. We had to invest our money, you know. So we bought this six-foot wide trailer and everything. And then we went to see this horrible movie, The Exorcist. Mm -hmm. One day, it was so weird. I'm sitting there in my trailer, and I'm thinking I'm getting possessed by Satan, you know, because, like, a lot of people thought they were getting possessed after seeing The Exorcist. I open the door, and who's there? Mormon missionaries. I mean, it's like, whoa. So I go, come on in, guys. Could you exercise me? Look, I think I'm getting possessed by Satan here. And uh, <laughs> you know, I just go to these real, I go to real weird places sometimes. So they come in and, you know, they said they'd exercise. And then they asked me, was I married? And I go, I'm living with a guy. Well, that's why Satan's trying to get into you because you're living in sin here. So I called up, we have got to get married. <laughs> I'm getting possessed by it. And he thought he was being possessed too. I mean, Bill's like goofy too. So, so we think we're getting possessed by Satan. So that's why we got married. And then, uh, Doesn't everybody then we really got possessed by Satan. <laughs> <laughs> then we really went to hell. But no, uh, so then we got married, and after we got married, we had to move out of that place and go get these normal jobs in the city, and once we left the mountains, we became very conservative. And I was just like, you know, I was the mom. I had three babies, and my husband worked nights. Roseanne, at, at this point, he's the mail clerk. Yeah. You're in, in the house. Uh -huh. One time I left the house to buy a ham. And I was so panicked that I never left my house. All day and took care I of never you? left my house for seven years. Roseanne, you are weird. <laughs> I know. That's what I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> See, I sort of thought that you were normal, but I am normal. You are, but you're not. But the thing you, is, but that, you really are weird. But yeah. the thing is that I I'm very normal because more people are like me than you're probably than right. Yeah. <laughs> it's just what we, what we think TV's normal, but TV ain't the normal thing. We are. Okay, so now finally, after seven years, comes so the sisters. So my sisters come, yeah. they help me in the house, I leave the house. Yeah. I get a part-time job. I lost a lot of weight, I lost 120 pounds. Why? I uh, lost 120 pounds and you because I just got real yeah. tired of being fat. Okay. You know, um, 
so I lost all this weight, and then I, I, all I cared about was, I had this deep fear of like losing weight because I had this real fear, like when you're thin, you're really gonna be, become stupid and everything like this, all those things that fat people are afraid of, and all of it happened. You became stupid? I became really stupid, and all I cared about was his belt. I don't wow. know, belt. <laughs> and accessories, I really did, I went, oh, and it was real weird. Then I get this job as a cocktail waitress, yeah. And, and then, I, yeah, so. And was, you were funny as a cocktail waitress? Yeah, and all the guy customers, like, would encourage me, you know, because I was, like, starting to tell jokes out of nowhere. Real weird, I know it's real weird. So these guys, they go, why don't you go down, they tell me that coming to see me at this place where I worked was, like, going to see these comics at this downtown comedy store place, comedy shop, works, whatever it was. And, and so I go, what? Then I'm like, huh? There's, I go, there's what? Oh, there's this place where people get on stage. They, I go, oh my God. It, uh, oh. So I go down there and I tell my jokes and came back with uh, the act that I pretty much do now. So it was always there. Oh, yeah. I used to be uh, much more uh, radical or whatever in my comedy than I am now. But I found a middle ground where people would listen to me because when it boils down after everything's done is every woman is like a housewife to me. I don't care if you're, what's her name, president of Pakistan there or whatever. Mrs. What's Budo. What's name, yeah. You think Mrs. Budo comes home and has to wash the dishes? Yeah. Like she has to take care of the baby, probably. Of course she does. Yeah. You know, well, let's talk about that. You know, that's what I want to talk about, that. I don't want to talk about that she's president. I don't care. I, she still does the dishes, and you know it, and I know it. And so does, what's her name? Well, Thatcher, she probably has slaves, but... <laughs> I mean, every woman does it, and everybody knows it. And people would go, well, why don't you talk about more universal things? And I go, but what am I going to talk about? When I went to Vietnam, what am I going to talk about? I clean everything, and everything's my fault. You talked about when you lost 100 pounds. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and then I'll talk about how I gained yeah, it back. Why did you gain it back? Uh, I like being fat. Do you really? Yeah. Do you really? Yeah. Why do you um, like being fat? Um... Well, there's just been times in my life where I've liked being fat, and there are other times in my life where I've liked being thin. And I, I don't think that it, it, your weight makes you happy or unhappy. I think it's all the other stuff. But um, sometimes I think it's the greatest thing any woman can do is to be fat, and the sexiest thing any woman could do is to be as fat as me or fatter. <laughs> and sometimes I want to be thin, and it just happens. Roseanne, I read, and you read too, that um, you're unhappy with the show, that you're difficult, that you're demanding. I mean, you know, I look yeah. through all the clippings. W yeah. wh what's that all about? Well, which part? Are you unhappy with the show? <laughs> I, is it not what you want to be? The, the show is getting to where I want it to be more and more. I wanted to do a show that was about real people, that wasn't about, honey, bathroom bowl needs cleaning. You know, I want to do a show that was like, just the 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 joy and the horror of like life and being in a family and and living with somebody for a long time and people don't solve problems in 22 minutes people ain't like pe women don't listen to their husbands and children you're not that interested you're working it's like yeah whatever you get it and leave me alone you know so if it's I funny that's that. okay with you and if it wasn't funny that was okay with you as long as it was true yeah on the show, there's a very close relationship with your sister. Does yeah. that come from real life? Yeah, that comes from real life with my sister. Um, my sister, when they moved out from Utah, both my sisters, but mostly my sister Geraldine, um, she, she and I are, like, incredibly close. You know, my husband helped me write the jokes, and my sister helped me write it, too. But when I went to the club to do it, and nobody would listen, or people were, like, freaking out, and they really did freak out. My sister would, like, there'd be pockets of people who were laughing. And my sister would go, you know, she'd be in the audience, and she'd go and stand behind the people who were laughing. Why? So that I could see them. And feel good. And be able to do it. Roseanne, it's the first time, you, you know. People say that I make people cry. Well, I'm, I'm asking not you about cry. Your, I'm asking you about your sister. I'm tearing Look up, at that. and I'm not Because you love her that much. That's yeah, fine. I do love my sister very much. God, I hate myself for doing this, but she really helped me all through my life. Why do you hate yourself for doing this? That's okay. You can laugh, and you can do this, too. Maybe if I pick my nose, you'll pull the camera yeah. off me. Uh, that's right. <laughs> but, no, I really love my sister, and I'm glad she's here with me.
now, when, when, you, when the money's coming in, when, you know, when you're living in these pretty surroundings, do you ever think of what it was like, what, five, six years ago? You mean before I got, like, rich and famous? Before you got rich stuff? and famous and all that stuff. Yeah, I think about it all the time. I think about it all the time. I think about it when people come to clean my house. I remember when I used to go clean their house. I remember it. I always try to remain because I can't really change into nothing else. I'll always be a working class person. Did you ever go back to that hospital? I went back to the state hospital like after I had been on Carson once. And I was going, I can't believe that I ever lived here and that I ever got out. Because all the other kids my age that were there are all dead. And uh, most of them were there for drugs. Like I said, it was the 60s. And uh, a lot of them killed themselves there. But uh, when we were going down, I saw this nurse, and she had these um, two people with her, you know? And so I did this for myself. I did this for myself. But I just pulled up alongside them, and I go, um, I go, I used to be in here 15 years ago. And... Uh, You know, then I go, um, I go, you know, and now I make over a million dollars a year. And all of them turned and just go. <laughs> then the nurse goes, what? And I go, I'm not talking to you. Maybe it's like in with one of them. Maybe one kid felt, hey, I'll be okay, too. If she is, I will be, too. Yeah, and I am okay. Thank you.